It's March 2023, lockdown restrictions are over, we can travel again like normal human beings, and we're heading for the USA for another epic road trip. I'm inviting you along for the journey, so please sit back and enjoy the first part of Mountains, Canyons, Aliens in the Wild West. As usual, the only way to start these adventures is with a punishing transatlantic flight. Or in this case, three flights. Glasgow to London, London to Philadelphia, and Philadelphia to Phoenix. And a big thank you at this point to British Airways for setting off from Heathrow Airport without putting our bags on the plane. Thanks a lot. The first we found out about this was in Philadelphia, with 45 minutes to get through TSA and onto our next flight for Phoenix, Arizona. At 11pm in Phoenix, with no luggage, what else could go wrong? Well, the hotel we'd booked specifically because it had a shuttle, had no shuttle. A conclusion we only came to after 45 minutes in the dark at the bus stop. Thankfully Jeff Gordon was driving our taxi and we were there at the hotel in 15 minutes. Day 2, and at least the bed was comfy, that we were here in Phoenix, Arizona. Still no shuttle, so back to the airport in another taxi to collect the hire car. We were expecting a VW Jetta, so I was more than happy. A big, huge, massive Dodge Charger with 2,000 miles on the clock and a huge boot to carry all that no luggage that we still had. It was still in Heathrow. But at least we've got the car. We can finally get on the road and start this road trip. We headed north from Phoenix via Highway 17 once we'd got past all the Phoenix detours. Classic long straight American roads, big skies and cactuses at either side. We thought we would see loads of these saguaro cactuses, but it turns out they only grow in a specific part of Arizona, and we were driving away from them, though we will be back in Phoenix at some point. The original plan for today was to visit Montezuma Castle, but due to all our clothes still being in Heathrow, we had to head to Walmart for clothes, supplies and toiletries because the clothes we were currently living in had been worn for two and a half days and well they were in a good condition. One of the other things that I'd packed in my suitcase was my dash cam and the dash cam bracket. So the footage from this part of the holiday is Thanks to Joanne doing a great job of holding my camera up whilst I drove, filming as much as she could. It's a little bit wobblier than I'd hoped, but you're going to have to trust me, the Highway 89 up the mountain is a spectacular road. Just before we reached our next hotel, we caught a glimpse of two local deer. Then look at this for a stunning view. I think you're probably going to hear me saying stunning view quite a lot in this video. So today was a gentle three hour drive and we made it to Jerome, Arizona, known as America's biggest ghost town. And we'd booked into the completely atmospheric ghost city inn. We were not disappointed. This is the northern exposure room, completely eccentric, completely off the wall, but an ideal place for our first two nights. Bit of relaxation, bit of time to go over the flights, and look at the view from the balcony. How perfect's that? In the morning of day three, I was still on UK time, so I woke up about 6 a.m. So I climbed out onto the balcony of the Ghost City Inn and sat and recorded sunrise over the mountains. It's worth the flight sometimes just for experiences like this. Absolutely spectacular. But resting doesn't mean doing nothing. It's time to explore Jerome. Founded in the late 19th century, we are 5,000 feet above sea level and a town founded on copper mining. Once home to over 10,000 people, it now has a population of around 400 and survives on tourism. It's well known for its local wines. At one point, there were fewer than 100 residents here, which is why it is known as a ghost town and why a lot of the buildings in the area are derelict. 
This was the town jail. It slid to this position in the 1930s, having moved 25 feet down the hill. In this pit frame, just outside the town, this is the head of the Audrey shaft. The hole here goes down 1,900 feet. That's 650 feet higher than the Empire State Building. Incredible, I'm not falling down there. After lunch, a short drive out of Jerome is the Gold King Mine and Ghost Town. This is right up my street. So I hope you enjoy this little wander around this attraction. If you're like me and Joanne and love rusty trucks and friendly people, this is definitely worth a visit. not particularly warm today. There was snow on the road, we're 5,000 feet above sea level, and a combination of being out in the sun all day and jet lag saw us back on the balcony at the Ghost City Inn. Dinner at the Haunted Hamburger. Talking of haunting, I'm not entirely sure we were alone in this hotel overnight. Still no news of our luggage. Maybe tomorrow. Day 4 and it's time to leave Jerome. This is a road trip after all, so we need to hit the road. There can be no more iconic roads than Route 66. And not only that, we pulled into Seligman, Arizona, the town that saved the historic road. We had lunch here and trust me, it was cold. Especially with our jackets still in a suitcase, but it was well worth a visit. I was astonished to see this destination board with Glasgow right on the top. Almost as if they knew we were coming somehow. It feels like we're in the set of Cars, the movie. A theme that will definitely pop up a lot before the end of this trip. Onwards and westwards along Route 66, it was quiet, cold and starting to rain, but it was no less amazing to be here. The next stop on the road was the famous Hackberry General Store. More Route 66 history, some classic cars, some antiques and some dollar bills on the ceiling. And now I don't usually make a habit of taking photos in public toilets, but they don't usually look like this, so it had to be recorded. With the rain coming down, and two hours to the next motel, we kept moving. It was dark by the time we got to Lake Havasu, and we thought we'd better go and buy a bag, as carrying all our limited supplies of t-shirts and underwear into hotels and carrier bags was starting to get a bit embarrassing. Day 5 started with a motel breakfast. A couple of slices of toast on one of those conveyor belt things, and a chocolate muffin. Then it was a short walk to see a London landmark. The almost 200 year old London Bridge was moved here in 1971, when there was no Lake Havasu City. There wasn't even a channel here, they dug out the channel so that the bridge had something to cross. We weren't there for long, there wasn't much in Lake Havasu City other than the bridge. And with the road calling us, it was time to keep moving. We had some more stunning sights to see today. We drove north on I-40, and just before we crossed the mighty Colorado River into California, we came off it. We've been there, we did that on the last road trip, which you can see a link to at the end of this video. 
We switched on to Highway 10, which gradually gets narrower and narrower and bendier and bendier as we get further north with blind crests and pointy mountains ahead of us. After three hours of driving, we reached Oatman, Arizona, another historic mining town, high up in the hills and jammed full of character. We were really enjoying our wander along the boardwalks and into the antique and gift shops when we noticed that a lot of the people seemed to be leaving. Giving it little thought, we dived into the sandwiches we'd bought for lunch at Walmart when out of the blue, Joanne's phone came to life. A tornado had touched down about 30 miles away and a flash flood warning was issued with a threat to life. Don't travel. Well, it's hard not to travel when we've still got several hours to go to get to our next destination. And being Scottish, rain doesn't really hold much fear for us. But the route was a very winding mountain road with no crash barriers. Then a long drive across a floodplain, so we did get moving. Sadly that meant pictures out of the car window of Cool Springs, Arizona. Used and blown up in the film Universal Soldier. There were a few hairy moments where the road vanished below rivers of mud, but it did stop raining when we got to I-95, and late that evening, we arrived in... Fabulous Las Vegas. It was a long day, but we finally had some news on our luggage. It had made it to Phoenix, and would be flown to us in Las Vegas the next day. Yeehaw! Celebratory pizza in our motel room, and time to rest before tomorrow. Join me for the next episode for more of the journey and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you're enjoying this content. See you next time in episode 2.